Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 45 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about instead of triggers. Specifically, we'll be talking about instead of insert trigger. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 43 and 44 of this video series. In SQL Server, there are three types of triggers, DML, DDL, and logon triggers. DML triggers are fired automatically in response to DML events. Examples of DML events include insert, update, and delete. DML triggers can be further classified into two types, after triggers and instead of triggers. After triggers are fired after the triggering action, whereas instead of triggers are fired instead of the triggering action. The name itself suggests that. So in this session, we'll be talking about instead of triggers. Let's instead of insert trigger specifically. Let's try to understand that with an example. I have two tables here, TBL employee on the left hand side, which has got ID, name, gender, and department ID columns. And TBL department, which has got department ID and department name columns. Now let's say I want to create a view based on these two tables. So obviously, I want the ID, name, and gender from depart uh, employee table and department name from TBL department table. So obviously, to create this view, we have to join these two tables. So this view is based on multiple tables. So this view has got multiple base tables. Now let's say when I try to insert a row into this view, so I'm trying to insert into this view. Okay, and if you look at the view itself, it has got one, two, three, four columns, ID, name, gender, and department name. So if you look at the values that we are supplying to be inserted into this view, we have ID, name is Valerie, gender is female, and the department name is IT. So, but we know that a view is a virtual table, meaning it is nothing more than a stored SQL query. It doesn't really contain any data. The view actually gets its data from its underlying base tables, in this case from TBL employee and TBL department. So when we try to insert a row into this view, it should, behind the scenes, insert that row into these base tables. Okay. So when I insert, look at this, we are inserting this row into this view. So we are supplying ID, name, gender, and department name. Now SQL Server has a confusion. Okay which column should go into which table or, or into which base table should this row be inserted because we already have a row with IT. So should another row be inserted? So there is this confusion. That's why if your insert statement is affecting multiple base tables, then SQL Server will throw an error stating so. So this view is based on multiple tables. And your insert statement into this view will affect both these tables. That's why if you look at the error message, view of function, view employee details is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables. And that makes sense. Okay, so now let us see how to correct the situation using instead of triggers. Now, instead of triggers are usually used to, you know, update views correctly that are based on multiple tables. Okay, so since this view is based on multiple tables and we are trying to insert data into this view, let us see how we can make use of instead of insert trigger to correctly insert the row into the underlying base table. In this case, we need to insert this row into TBL employee table. So in order to do that, first we need to create this view. So let's create the view. So this view is based on TBL employee and TBL department tables. So we have these two tables, TBL employee and TBL department. And then we need to create a view on those tables. So create view, view name as, and what are the columns that we need in the view? ID, name, gender, and department name. So select those columns from TBL employee, join that with TBL department on the common column between these two tables is department ID. So department ID in TBL employee, DEPT ID in TPL department table. So let's create this view now. Execute command completed successfully. Refresh the views folder and we should see the view there. All right, so we successfully created the view. Now let's try to select data from that view. So select star from that view, press F5, you should see the data from that view, ID name, gender, and department name. Now, let's try to insert a row into this table. So obviously, we are supplying the value for ID, name, gender, and department name. 
let's try to execute this press f5 look at this we get the same error viewer function is not updatable because the modification affects multiple base tables okay now let's see how to correct this view using an instead of insert trigger so obviously we need to create an instead of insert trigger so create trigger and give a meaningful name to the trigger triggers usually have a tr prefix so tr underscore the object on which we are creating the view here we are creating the view on view employee details underscore for which action you are creating this trigger we are creating this trigger for instead of insert action okay we want this trigger to be fired for I mean instead of insert so on this view instead of insert as begin end now I don't have any any implementation here first let us select what is there in inserted and deleted tables now we know that triggers make use of two special tables called inserted and deleted inserted table will contain the newly added data deleted table will contain deleted rows if you are updating then inserted table will contain the new data whereas deleted table will contain the old data and we have spoken about these special tables used by triggers in the previous parts 43 and 44 okay so let's create this trigger and see what's gonna happen execute incorrect syntax select star obviously we need to specify from the same for deleted so let's create this trigger command completed successfully now look at this we have an instead of trigger on this view so obviously when you try to execute this insert statement since there is an instead of insert trigger instead of inserting this row into the view it actually execute this trigger and in this trigger you told to select the rows from inserted and deleted tables and that's what it will do so let's try to do that so now we shouldn't get an error instead it will select the rows from inserted table and deleted table so if you look at the inserted table it has got the ID that you have inserted name gender and the department name but the deleted table will obviously be empty because you didn't delete any row from the view alright so now let us see how to actually create an instead of insert trigger that can correctly update the underlying TBL employee base table so obviously you know what's your intention when you're exe executing this insert into view query you want to insert this employee into TBL employee table so obviously you're supplying ID which is 7 name Valerie gender is female and you are supplying the name of the department because you, you only know the department name because you are you're trying to insert into view okay but then behind the scenes within the trigger what you need to do is take this department name from this table and then retrieve the department ID from TBL department table and then insert that department ID along with ID name and gender into TBL employee table so let's see the trigger so we have this trigger here so if you look at the implementation of the trigger so we're creating this trigger on the view instead of insert as begin so first we are creating a variable to hold the department ID so which is of type integer and we are selecting the department ID from TBL department table joining that with inserted table and we have spoken about joins you know in a great detail in the previous sessions of this video series so please check them if you are new to joins so we are joining that with inserted table on the department name because look at this you have the inserted table here and then you in the department table you have department name and department ID so obviously you are joining this inserted table on department name and getting the department ID from TBL department so once you have the department ID what you need to do now is insert that into the employee table but before that look at this if somebody supplies department name in this insert query as some garbage like this now in the TBL department table we don't have a department with this name so obviously when you execute when this trigger gets executed department ID will be null because there is no department with that name 
So obviously, if a user is trying to insert a junk department name, then we should throw an error. And to throw an error in SQL Server, so that's what is the check here. So if department ID is null, we want to raise an error. Okay, and we are using raise error function for this. So invalid department name, statement terminated. And then there are two other parameters that we are passing to this raise error function. The first one is the severity level. There are several severity levels which we'll talk about later, but we usually use 16. 16 means it is something that user can correct and resubmit their query. And the state, which is usually one. We'll talk about raise error and exception handling in SQL Server in a later session. So if the department ID is null, throw this message, raise this error message, and then stop processing. And to indicate that, we use the return keyword. So return from here. Don't execute any further statements. Don't execute these statements. OK, so if the department ID is valid, on the other hand, then we want to continue to in insert the row into TBL employee table. So we are saying insert into TBL employee. Obviously, in TBL employee, we have got ID name, gender, and department ID columns. So into these columns, insert the ID name, gender, and department ID. Where is this at DAPT ID? That's a variable which contains the department ID that we have got from TBL department table. So insert that into this TBL employee table. That's it. So let's create this trigger now. So instead of create, we need to specify alter because we have already created a trigger with that name. So press execute. Command completed successfully. So we now have this trigger created on that view. So obviously, when we execute this insert into statement, instead of the actual insert statement, look at this. I am supplying a garbage. You know, this department doesn't exist. OK, so when we execute this insert query, what's going to happen in the department table? If you look at department table, you only have IT payroll, HR, and admin. But in the query, you are inserting a garbage. So obviously, your trigger, when it tries to get the department ID from TBL department table by joining the inserted table with TBL department, it will not find a department with this name in TBL department. So DEPT ID will be null. So if that is null, then we throw this error. So let's see what happens. Do we really get that error? So let's execute this. Plus F5, invalid department name, statement terminated. OK, and obviously, when you select the employee and department table, you should not have Valerie's record inserted. Because what happens after raising that error? Just return. Don't process anymore. So this insert statement will not be processed. Okay, but on the other hand, if we provide a valid department, so IT, I'm supplying IT as the department name, and if you look in TBL department table, IT is one. So Valerie's record should be inserted into TBL employee table with department ID is equal to one. So let's press F5, one row affected. So let's select data from the base table, employee and department. Look at that. Valerie is seven. Our department ID is one. One is nothing but IT. OK, now let's try to select the same thing from the view. You should get that new row as well in the view. OK, seven Valerie female IT. So if we go back to the slides, this is exactly the trigger that we have created. Now, understanding instead of insert trigger is pretty straightforward here. You know. The key to understanding this trigger properly is to understand those special tables used by triggers, inserted and deleted. And we also need to have a good understanding of joins, because to get the department ID, we are joining inserted table with DBL department. And then obviously, if the user is passing in garbage in the insert query for the department name, which does not exist in TBL department table, we want to raise an error. Because we don't want to have a foreign key violation in T between TBL employee and TBL department tables by inserting, uh, you know, that department. I mean, obviously the department ID doesn't exist there, so we raise an error. 
That's it. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.